what's going on, America? We need to have a conversation. You do know that you have a choice whether you're going to be rich or poor. Yes, it is a choice. And in this video, I'm going to outline how this works out for most people. Because once again, it's a choice. Any way you slice it, it is a choice. If this is the first time here, what I want you to do is get 30 days to 2,500 and the hustler's mindset, pimping your mind for success. And just don't get them because they're free. Actually do the work because this is going to be a pivotal theme in this video, doing the work. Okay, America? So here's the thing. Now, I know I'm just a dude on the internet and I'm coming at you and I know you're like, being rich or poor is a choice? Those nasty, evil, rich people? They're holding me down. They're keeping me from getting my piece of American dream. It ain't me. Actually, it is you. And I'm going to explain how the social economic classes develop. Because the first part of it is the social economic class that you're born into, more than likely you're gonna die into it. So that means if you were born rich, George Bush is the prime example of this, he was born into a wealthy family, even though he was a C student, he got the behavior programming to be a rich person. That's what it is. It's not about your grades in high school or college even. That, that, that could elevate you if you're coming from the bottom rungs and you work your way up and you go to college, you get good grades, you get a good job, you, you do the right things. This is a part of a springboard, which I will talk about later, but the social economic class that you're born in has a lot to do where you are today. And I'm gonna explain why. And I'm also gonna explain why it's a choice. The first choice is to accept everything that you're told. Let's talk about me, America. I was born in Birmingham, Alabama at Cooper Green Hospital. Now, I am not, based upon my social economic programming, I'm not supposed to be where I'm at. I was not programmed for this. At the age of 32, I had a seismic shift in my life that caused me to reprogram. If I did not reprogram, I would still be on that indoctrinated track of my social economic programming, which was to get a good job, to go to church on Sunday, there ain't nothing wrong with going to church on Sunday, get a haircut, stay out of trouble. This was my programming. And one of the first things that you have to understand is very, very, very few people question their programming. Now, I was an odd little child. I used to ask the preacher questions like, where are the dinosaurs in the Bible? Boy, don't you be questioning God? That, that was my response. I never got an answer, but that was my response that I got to that question. So part of it is that you never actually question your programming. You accept it as gospel. This is the way it is. There are many people who never ever question the social economic programming that they have. It's like, well, my mama did it, my daddy did it, my grandpa did it, my grandma did it. That's good enough for me. That's all I need. So that's the first choice is to not question your social economic programming. The second choice is to fall into the American lifestyle. And what is the American lifestyle? You meet a girl, sexy Susan, cute Carly, big booty Betty. Y'all get together. Y'all start having relations. Next thing you know, a baby's born. And this is one of the biggest choices that will determine whether you will be rich or poor. So you and sexy Susan, sexy Susan's pregnant, and you were on this path of going to school, but now you got responsibilities. So you 
drop out of school and get a job to support sexy Susan and your unborn child. Because that's what a man does. So the next thing you know, that you have essentially locked in your economic prospects by doing that. Because she got pregnant, you got a job, then y'all, you know, watch my Big Mama video because many people who do this end up living with Big Mama because they locked in their social economic prospects. Dropped out of school, stopped networking, probably had another kid, laying around the house, Netflixing and chilling. So that was a choice. You and Sexy Susan made, that was a choice. So another choice that happens is the lack, and this is something that I'm like, I was gonna talk about in 30 days, 2,500. A lot of you are down low, enrolling in the course, but a lot of you are not doing the course. Now, I knew this was gonna happen because I've done it before. And there, there's, you know, there's a, there's a 30 day challenge Facebook group and we got some really good people in there. They're questioning stuff, they're networking, they're talking to each other. And there are many people, because I think like 2,000 people since I started doing it have downloaded, you know, enrolled in the course, but there's only 125 people in the Facebook group. And that's gonna be the all-stars. These are gonna be people who are taking action. These are gonna be the people. So roughly, God, like 3%, 4%? All right, America, you, you, you go hate me for saying this, but I'm gonna say it. You must be entertained to hold your attention. You must be entertained to capture your attention. This is a choice that you make. Instead of sitting down and struggling and reading a book, you rather be entertained. This is why many of the internet marketers on YouTube have Lambos, a flashy lifestyle, because they know that that's what you, appeals to you. Hard work, valor, ethics, eh, miss me with that. Miss me with that, I don't, I don't want that. This is another choice that you make, America, that will keep you poor, that will keep you in the lower strata of the economic socialization, that will keep you on the lower rungs, that you must be entertained to hold your attention. Because if it's not entertaining, as this YouTube channel would suggest, because I've got a lot of videos on here that teach people how to start businesses, and it's not sexy, entertaining stuff. And I don't get the views. Because you've got to be entertained, America. This is one of the things that's going to keep you poor. I want you to think of all of the little nerdy kids you went to school with. I want you to classify them like, Little Ned the Nerd, uh, Sadiddy, Sarah. I want you to think about all these people. And I want you to think about if you kept up with, where are they now? The nerd's your boss. Because these folks had the ability to maintain focus and intention in unsexy areas. So because you make the choice, and it's a choice, we all have 24 hours a day where we get up and we do what we do. It is a choice that you make America that you must be entertained. This is why you see these YouTube channels, these family blogs, because they're entertaining. They're fun. They make you smile. They bring joy to your day. But you gotta be entertained because you don't have the focus to stick with something that doesn't entertain you. That's a big point. If we was in church, y'all should be clapping, hollering, and doing amen and well and putting your hand up to Jesus. Because that's a big, big reason that a choice that you make, you, that you got to be entertained that why you won't be rich. See, it's all a choice. Now, let's go back and let's talk about me. I was socially, economically programmed to be a good Southern boy. Go to church, love my mama, find me a little sweet little girl, get her pregnant, get a little house, 
go to work Monday through Friday, have you know a car, have a have one of these barrel barbecues on the side of the house, go out there and fire up the grill on the weekend, cook some meat, drink some beer. That's what I was socialized for. But as a child, I was one of those little nerdy kids. I had questions. I questioned everything. And even with my questioning, I got on that path that was inbred in me by my social economic conditioning. I got a job, I got married, had children. Then at the age of 31, it all crashed. That's when I got reprogrammed. That's when I began to really not only question stuff, I began to apply, learn new lessons and apply these lessons. Cause see, I listen, and I'm gonna tell you where I got this from. Earl Nightingale's Lead to Feel. It was a course, it was Nightingale Conat, where essentially you could just order it and they let you listen to it for 30 days for free, which was right up my alley, cause I had no money, I was broke. So they let me listen to it and I listened to it and Earl said, it's a choice. But see, here's the thing about choice. Whether you choose to have an active choice or a passive choice where you just don't do anything, it's still a choice. And I began to make better choices. And I'm gonna tell you, I went through this period where I examined what happened to my life and how I had descended into financial chaos. I wrecked my car, I was living in this crazy place, I lost my family, I lost my job. I was really in a bad, bad situation. And then one day I was sitting in that room in that boarding house and I had a moment of clarity. The reason that you are here is you didn't save money. And it hit me like a, a boulder of bricks. It was just like, boom. I did not prepare. I did not have any, and I was like, oh, so this was my fault. So I took ownership, which was a choice. And because I took ownership, I was no longer a victim. See, victimhood can be a choice. Like if someone just, you walk down the street, someone comes out and mugs you, you're a victim. That happened. You were accosted, you were molested. But some people adapt a victimhood pathology, but they're not victims because they made the choice to adapt the victimhood pathology. So it's always someone else's fault. And here lies in the pathway. If you make the choice to become economically viable and you take ownership and you begin to build yourself you can be rich in America. There ain't nobody holding you down. There's nobody, there's, there's no, there's no gate. There's no gate with a lock on it that's saying you can't get in. There's no gate. The only gate is the choices that you make. That's the only gate. And I talk about a lot of things, you know, economically and socially on this channel and Many people right now have made the choice to tap out. They're not trying to become economically viable. Oh, Glenda, starting a business is too hard. I'm waiting on my government stimulus check. I, man, they're doing all that. I don't want to do that. I just want to smoke a blunt, chill, and get my head right. I just want to smoke and drink a few beers, smoke a cigarettes, and just chill. I don't want to stress myself with this business talk, which is a choice. See America, the choices that you make and the choices that you don't make still ramif ramif ramifications of it's a choice. Whether you make it an active choice or not, it's still a choice. And right now during this thing, you're going to have many people who've made the choice to never read another book. They've made the choice to never take an online course. They've made the choice to never do anything to improve their lives. 
They've made this choice. Now, here's something that gets a little wild with these choices. When you see someone who has made a different choice that elevates them, many of you choose to become haters. And many of you choose to adapt false narratives. Well, all rich people are getting divorced, all their kids on drugs, I don't want to be rich. This is the false narrative that you tell yourself. I live in a wealthy neighborhood. I can tell you some of these kids around here are the sweetest kids you will ever see. They're kids. You know why? Because their parents have enough money to provide economic um, barriers so they're not forced to grow up too soon. 16 year olds around here are 16 year olds. They're little kids because mom and dad has provided a protective shelter for them to grow up and be children. They're not babies kids. Sure, there might be one or two on drugs. It happens. There might be one or two, you know, do cheating on his wife. It happens. But overall, I'm the only bachelor in my neighborhood. Everyone else is married. I think there's a widower. She's uh, Skip Carey, who used to be the announcer for the Braves. She lives at the front. It's a choice. See, one of the things is that you double down upon stupidity. Well, you know, rich folks, they're keeping me down. To a degree, that's partially crude. It ain't the 1% that's keeping you down. It is socially the 9.9% because that's the barrier between you and being ultra wealthy. And the 99.9% infects policies to keep their children safe that impact you. Like, there's a really good school just around the corner. Guess what? Your children can't go to this school because you don't live in this neighborhood, which seems fair, but this is because the 99%, 9.9% do these things. Like, you don't live in this neighborhood, you're not going to that school. And this school has the, all of the greatest resources, the latest advances, they have small class sizes, but your little baby kid ain't going to that school. You know where your kid's going to school? Because you made a choice for cheap rent. Oh, the rent's good over here. I'm going to live here. Rent's 650 Because of that choice that you made, you also made some choices that you are unaware of. Because you chose to live in the low rent district, you chose your children's friends. You chose their girlfriend and boyfriend. You chose their networking opportunities. You chose their low income school. You made all of those choices from your singular choice of living cheap. That was a choice. It's like, man, man, my rent 650. It ain't that stressful. You know, we live it all right. We live it all right. We get barbecue on the weekends. We do all this. You made the choice for yourself and your children that will last for decades. What, why do I say that? Because your schools, your, your, that choice of living in that low, low income environment, your children are going to network with other low income environment children. This is one of the strangest things I've seen as I ascended up the ladder, that people with money don't want their children hanging out with baby's kids. Why is this? Here's something that rich parents often know. Who you spend the most time with shapes you as a person. So if you're spending, you know, and typically kids like to spend more time with their friends than their parents, just facts. So these kids are spending all this time with baby's kids. Guess what? Baby's kids' bad ha habits are going to rub off on these little rich kids. And this is why rich parents are like, no, 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 no. You can't hang out with so-and-so. Carl, he comes from a broken home. His, his daddy's an alcoholic. His mama's a prostitute. You can't hang out with them because they know that the behaviors, the social economic programming of Carl will rub off on their child. And this is why they like, this is why there's these economic moats. Like I said, this is the school around the corner. 
It's one of the best schools in the nation. But you can't go there because they don't want you there. The people with intact families and strong kids don't want their kids socializing with your kids. So because of this economic moat, your kids are not going to network with these kids. And I'm going to tell you something uh, on Facebook. I'm going to tell you a little story. I bought some stools from next door. And one of the things I just did for fun is I Facebook this girl who was young and she came from money clear, it was very clear. She had a poor cyan outside and her boyfriend or husband or, or fiance, whatever he was, he had a BMW and they were living in a $500,000 house and they were like 22. This is their first house. They were able to get it because mom and dad had money to uplift them, to keep them in that social economic class. And I went ahead and Facebooked her and I looked at her friend's network. It was nothing but little richy rich kids. There were no poor people. There were no average people. They were doctors, judges, attorneys, business owners. All of them had that same kind of look. I got money. Every last one of them. Because that was her social economic class. Those were her peers. See how this works? So you as a parent, one of the worst things you can do is submit to financial pressure to live in a low income environment because you are choosing your, your children's friends, associates, and networking partners for life. This is why you can't go out and get new old friends. So when your son or daughter is 30, 40 years old, and they're going to look back at their childhood and they're going to look at their friends, it's going to be those low income environment friends who, and essentially everybody's in the same boat. No one has any money. No one can say like, because here's one of the things that I saw once I began to ascend, because once again, America, I was just like you. I was socialized to be low income. I was socialized. But once again, I'm not supposed to be where I'm at because I had that seismic shift. It brought me here and I was in an environment where everybody was rich. The job I had, I used to sell office furniture. All of the salespeople were rich. Every last one of them. And their behaviors were very different. They would go to the golf course. They would do certain things. And one of them took me under the wing and said, hey, you need an LLC. He taught me the LLC game. He put me on that game, changed my life. See, because I ascended, I was able to get into networks and I was able to start networking with people who could provide benefit because they had excess. See, when someone is well off, things that drive poor people to even deeper poverty become inconveniences. They don't lose their mind because the washer and dryer broke. It's like, we'll just get a new one. But if you are in that lower economic echelon, your washer and dryer goes out. You may just haul it on the back porch and leave it there for a few months until you can get another one or go to rent to own. So the behavior patterns are different because of the choices that people make. Cause like, like when I was in this environment, it was literally blowing my mind. I started hearing stuff like, yeah, I just bought a new Bentley, wrote a check. I want you to think about this. This became my new peer group and it was blowing my mind. Cause I was like people buying, people paying cash for houses. People paying cash for cars, people taking five to six vacations a year. <laughs> Blew my mind, rewired my programming, totally, totally changed my viewpoints on everything. Because see, if I had stayed in my social economic station, I never would have met these people. This is why if you're a parent, 
I know this is going to sound really crazy, but you need to move to the most expensive neighborhood you can manage so you can set the stage for your kid's future because it's going to matter. Who you know and who knows you and who likes you matters. And this is why it's all a choice because I know plenty of people who went for the low rent. Uh, I, there was someone, I'm not even going to say his name, he moved from this neighborhood in, under the guise to be around his people. He moved out of the neighborhood because the neighborhood is expensive. He chose to move to a lower economic situation because it's expensive living here. This is the economic moat that keeps poor people out, that keeps poor kids from attending the schools. See, you can be rich in America, but you've got to make different and better choices. You've got to increase your attention span. You got to stop being entertained to be educated. That is a big, big, big one. Because as long as you got to be entertained before someone can get your attention and teach you some, you're going to be poor rest of your life because you don't have the ability to focus on something that isn't entertaining. That's going to be huge. So being rich or poor in America is a choice that you actively or passively make. So hopefully you got something out of this little chat America. Hopefully you understand that even like Right now, I'm, I'm about to hear, I'm about to tell you, my life was a dumpster fire in 1997, 1998, and I began to transform in 1999. So I'm here to tell you from experience, even if your life is a dumpster fire, even if you live on the bad side of town, you can turn it around. It's possible. It is very possible but it depends upon you making better choices. Because it's all boils down to the choices you make and the company you keep. It's what it boils down to. Because I was a little poor little single, you know, poor little child of a single parent from Alabama, and I began to work my situation, self into a situation where I began to network with millionaires. I began to network with people who had different perspectives. I began to network with people who could put me on. Let me tell you how I got my job there. It was my network. It was like, hey, I'm looking for a job. They were looking for a salesperson. Boom, boom. My people talk to their people. Oh, Glendon, go here, do this, talk to this guy. I went in, I sat down, didn't even look at my resume. He's like, well, what kind of book of business do you have? Well, I was like, well, this is what I'm working on. These is my leads and stuff. And that's, he's like, oh, you got leads? Come on in. That's how I got my job. I did not, I didn't apply online. I didn't do any of that stuff. That's how I got my job, through my network. Through my network. I cannot tell you the importance of a network. One of the things you, you got to understand, America, is this all a choice. And if you continue to make bad income based choices like living in the low rent district because you don't want to stress yourself, you could be programming your children for the next two to three generations. And this is what's about to happen. Because, see, the state of Georgia is open, right? And all my people talking about a V-shaped recovery. Once the state's open, we're going back. We've been open for a month. Jobs haven't come back. This is another reason that you want to be a business owner. This is what's about to happen in America. The global reset is real. And depending upon the choices that you make in the next five years are going to set the stage for your families. For generations to come and one of the things you've got to understand is America 
You got to start paying attention to things that don't entertain you. Because one of the things that's going to happen with this global reset is that many people who were so-called middle class are going to fall out of that middle class. And also the networks, because like I said, I got a job because of my network. It's something that I established. It is very important for you to learn how to network. It's very important for you to be able to build networks and maintain networks to get wealthy. Because it's all about your network. Right now, I know 50 millionaires. That's my network. So if there's some I don't know, I can pick up the phone, call someone, and get an answer or get a connection or be introduced to something. Uh, I mean, essentially, it's my network the people that I know, the people that I've established relationships who know me and like me. This is very, very important if you want to do well, because during this great shift, what's going to happen is pure chaos. And we're going to have a lot of people, because right now, 52, 53% of the country makes less than $33,000 a year. This is the group that is being raised by this pandemic. This is the group of people, people who work in restaurants, people who work in small businesses, the, the low wage, they're, they're being raised, they're being eradicated, they're being harmed. And who's not being harmed? People who are in my level, because they have something called excess cash and reserves. We can weather this thing out, no problem. But can you, because of the choices, and this is something that you gotta understand, the choices that you made 10 years ago impact your today. And that's how it works. The choices you made 10 years ago, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, impact your today. And there's a long lead time. So right now you gotta start making better choices, America. Better, better choices. And one of the best choices you can do is to go ahead and get 30 days to 2,500, start doing the course, join the Facebook group, start networking with other people. You, you have no clue who you're gonna meet in that, that group. Start networking with other people who are on the same path that you are. Get Hustler's Mindset, Pimping Your Mind for Success, get that book. Go ahead and get all that and begin to start making better choices. Because in America, if you're rich or you poor, it's a choice. And no one's ever told you this before. This is one of the things I learned from Earl Nightingale, Lead to Feel. I learned so much from that course. If you can get it, I recommend that you get it. Because it will open up your eyes to how America really works. So that's all I got for you guys. There should be another video here. Watch it. Subscribe, like, do all that stuff, do it all.